don't really like to define the meaning of our songs because we look at it as art and art should always be open to your personal interpretation or you know whatever your taste dictates so we don't really like to define the songs um, the video is a pretty basic video it's a live video and our bass player Shavo directed it it's basically his debut as a director and you know we feel he did a good job we don't really want to define our songs that's for that's for you to define for yourself sides to every city and there's bad sides to every city we happen to live in LA and um, you know I think we each take something special out of it and there's things that we don't like about it you know but that's gonna be the case wherever you live well, it's pretty widespread you know you got your suburbs which is like the same as any place in the world families living you know regular streets <clears throat> and then you have Hollywood West Hollywood area which is you know you've got that's that's like your main town but it's so it's so um, decentralized that there is no central place with big buildings that you can go to you can go anywhere and everything's 20 25 minutes away you have to have a car in LA that's why they have that song nobody walks in LA it's true and we don't use mass transit either it's um, just about everybody drives in LA like you said and I think the cool one of the coolest things about LA is that it's pretty close to whatever you want if you want a forest you know you can drive yeah. two hours mountains you know you can go skiing there's a beach this sounds like a commercial for tourism but <laughs> there's a lot of positives to it and then there's negatives to it there's a lot of crime the more people you have the less privacy you're gonna have uh, the more pollution you're gonna have there's a lot of people that live there that are not from LA so there's a lot of loneliness because of that you know because everyone's trying to make it in the entertainment business or whatever and their families are usually in the Midwest or the East or whatever and um, you know, so there's that aspect of L.A. as well. Um, when, when people go to L.A., sometimes they go to Hollywood or West L.A., and they're like, people are not nice. And, you know, and, and part of it has to do with those people are very lonely in a big city where their families are maybe thousands of miles away. We did collaborate with Wu-Tang. In fact, many different artists did. It was a collaboration of maybe 15 or 20 different bands with Wu-Tang Clan members. So that's already been done. And we, we, did, we covered their song, Shame. And, uh, Russell and we did. Oh, yeah. We, we, did. we toured with Method Man and Redman. Method Man and Redman. But um, we, d we did a cover of Shame, and we were in the studio. After we had done our own version of that with, the, with System, we were in the studio with, uh, with uh, um, RZA. And, uh, yeah. And, and he did some new lyrics on the second verse and completed it. So we have a song that we've done with Wu-Tang, one of their songs that we've covered with them, and it's on Loud uh, Records, distributed by Sony. I'm sure you can, it's available.
I mean, it's not that we weren't honored by the fact that we were nominated for a Grammy. It's a big, it's a big honor for us to be nominated by our peers. But, you know, that's not going to change our lives in one way or another. It's not going to change uh, the way we go with our art one way or another. It's just an accolade like many other ones. And uh, if you put too much emphasis on it, it'll change your thoughts and it'll change the path that you're on. And we're just not interested in that. You know? I'm personally happy to have won because I think even they're like one of the bands that probably would care least about the award. And that's, that's awesome. But, you know, as far as the Grammys, I think they're, they're, they're having a tough time recovering from the fiasco with Metallica and, you know, Jethro Tull way back when, a couple yeah, of years back. In the same category, yeah. yeah. Not only that, but Jethro Tull won Best Heavy Metal Act. That's and that was just like, how could I really I put too much emphasis on someone that picks that really Jethro funny. Tull over Metallica for Best yeah, Heavy Metal really Act? <laughs> not that Jethro Tull isn't talented. Jethro Tull. I think they're very talented. Yeah, and I they're not metal. They're not metal, in my opinion. You know? <laughs> how do they win Best Metal Act? I don't know. So who's really picking the Grammys? Not grandmas. Maybe it is grandmas. I wish it was. The way that our lives are in, in, in society, in modern society, it, you got to kind of go out of your way to think about global things, to think about things that affect everyone because we're, we're designed to kind of like just walk in this line and think about our own lives. And it's, it's somewhat of a selfish existence, but you can't really blame most people because that's how we've been programmed in a way and, and been raised uh, in this society. Um, so it, it does take a little extra work to break out of that for each of us to to see the grander horizon of things happening, you know. Um, the average um, citizen of any country is so worried about paying his bills, putting his kids, you know, clothing their children and surviving, paying their credit card bills, paying their mortgage. You know, you have a 30-year mortgage. I mean, you work six days, five days a week, whatever it may be. The little time that you have at home, you want to spend with your family and, you know, be acquainted with them at least somewhat before they, you know, leave the household. And the last thing you have time for in your life is concerns that are happening 10,000, 15,000 miles away. You know, and the societies that we're in happen to form in this way so that we really can't do anything about anything or don't have time to or don't think we have time to because we're too busy trying to pay off our new car, our new house, and all that stuff that really doesn't mean anything. Once again, for us, and I want people to understand this, it's not, what determines your success is not how many albums you sell, how much money you make, or how much pussy you get. What determines your success is the feeling that you have when you finish that album. The day that we finish recording, we're just as proud of this album as we are now. And if it only sold 100,000 copies, we would be just as proud of this album as we are now.